it's really easy to not properly understand what your employees really cost you or your contractors. And that becomes a problem when you don't charge enough for them. So what I'm going to try and do today is help you understand and get some clarity on how much they actually cost you and how much they actually cost you, not just in terms of the hours that you pay them, but the hours that you can get paid for them and relate that to how much you charge in your hourly rate that you charge out. Right, I think that's a meaningful equivalency for us to think about here. Right, this is a long video, I think it's about eight minutes. So here's the short version, if you can't be bothered with all that. Shit loads more, they cost you shit loads more than you think, right? Almost double what you think you're paying them in the, t in the, uh, in the instance of an employee and about half as much again in a contractor, right? So lots, bucket loads more than what you thought. Okay, so let's get stuck into the calculation. I'm gonna work out the cost of an employee per hour that you charge. So we'll start with an a permanent employee. 60,000 a year salary, right? Divide that by 40 hours a week. You've got $28.85 an hour. That's what we normally think when we do these sums, isn't it? But you've got to add super 9%, nine and a quarter, that's 5,550. You've got to pay workers comp at about 5%, so that's 3,000. So you've already, before you've started, got 68,550, which is about 12% more than what you thought. But I'm finished. This is so much fun. A full year is 52 weeks. You pay four weeks holiday, so you've got 48 weeks. We pay five day weeks, don't we? So 48 weeks is 240 days, but you have to pay 10 sick days. So we're down to 230 working days. And yet we have to pay 13 public holidays. So we're down to 217 paid days. At eight hours a day, that's 1,736 hours that you're paying people for. So if you divide your 68,550 by 1,736, you've got $39.48 per hour that you pay them, right? That they work. And I still haven't finished. Add a car. Most tradespeople need to be given a vehicle in order to properly do their work. Cars cost about 12,000 a year, right? Think about the lease, the insurance, the rego, the tires, the petrol, the maintenance, right? You're talking 12 grand. So divide that by 1,736. You've got to add another $6.91 per hour. So that brings that hourly rate that you pay them up to 46.39. But wait, I still haven't finished. Do you actually get to charge them out for 40 hours a week? I don't think so. Right, do you have systems in place to measure it for a start, or are you just saying, yeah, I think I do, John? Because right, I'm going to tell you, I've never met anybody who is. Right, let's talk about travel time to and from jobs. Let's talk about smoko and lunch breaks. Let's talk about driving to get materials from Bunnings or wherever. What about cleaning the shed when there's no work to do, or fixing up the van and loading up the van with stuff in the morning before they go out? What about when you quoted a job to take 22 hours, but it took them 24 what about The Apprentice and his days at TAFE? What about RDOs? Right, even the best businesses are lucky to get 80% of the time that they're paying their staff back as hours charged. I worked with an accountant and she had three accountants working for her and her target for them was 80%, right, which they would achieve. Right, but they don't have to drive anywhere. They don't have to go and buy pipes or nails or anything. Right, they're sitting at their desk all day long and she feeds them with work all day long. She was very good at that. And they got 80%. So let's be generous and say your guys do 80% on average. Right, so now we're looking at the cost per hour charged out. So 80% of 1736 is 1388. So the hourly rate that they're costing you per hour you charge them out is your 68,550 plus your car, 80,550 divided by that 1,388. Look at that, $58.03 per hour is what they're costing you. Bloody hell, right? $58.03 per hour that you get to charge them out to your clients. This isn't great, is it, right? This isn't, if you're charging 50 bucks an hour, you're in a whole heap of pain, aren't you? If you're charging 65, you're not doing real well, because remember that that margin, the 65 minus 58, that's $7 an hour, needs to pay for the rent, 
all the overheads of your business, the rent for the office or the shed, the admin staff, your salary, and your vehicle, your insurances, your marketing, your accountant, your expensive business coach, which you should have, by the way, your tools, your IT and your software, right? That's before you make any profit. So at $7 margin an hour, you're gonna to have to have a lot of guys working a lot of hours, charging out at a lot of hours, before you start to get your money. I'm gonna stop, because how much to charge and how to charge more are different topics, and I'll cover them another day. I'll just quickly run by the same uh, calculation for a contractor. Right, here's a contractor, because I know all you're all thinking, oh, we put them on contract. I won't worry about all that shit. But what happens is you don't have any holiday pay to worry about, or super, or compo. They bring their own vehicle, but they charge more per hour, right? And it kind of balances out. So I picked 45 an hour. I don't think that's unreasonable to be paying a subby, a contractor. 80% charged out. Again, that same rule still applies. You pay them by the day or the week, not for every hour they clock on and off. So the cost per hour charge becomes 56.25 again, right? Almost the same. And you might fall foul of the sham contractor rules. Right? And I know we think there are ways around it if they're a proprietary limited and if they quote for jobs, but actually the government's trying to close those loopholes and you might get caught and you might be pissed off when you do. I had a, a client who got pinged by the ATO and he got a $50,000 bill and they audited him for the next three years as well. So he couldn't get away with anything else. So it was, you know, it was a significant risk he took and that's before you consider the fact that what you're saying when you've got an employee who you really only pay as a contractor is, fuck you a bit, we don't really care about you, you're not really one of us, you're not really on our team, and if there's no work on Monday, you won't be getting paid. So, you know, understand the impact that has on your culture and on that person's loyalty and, and on how your team works as a, as a group. Nearly finished. If I'm coaching someone, we try to make sure we understand this, we understand how that works in their business, how much they're paying their employees compared to how much they're charging out. We try to understand if they're recovering that money properly, if they're charging enough, if they're quoting accurately, right? We need to do it by job and we need to do it by working unit, which might be a guy or it might be, you know, a vehicle and two people, right? So here's my question for you. And of course, I'm going to ask you to comment in the comments. You know, do you know how profitable your jobs are? Every job? Do you know how profitable your guys are or your girls? Every one? Or every working unit, that vehicle and two people? Right? And if you're all smug and clever and you've got systems in place, to measure this and you know you're doing a great job, comment that and tell me and I'll be impressed. And if you don't really know and you kind of hope, um, then comment that and fess up because I think that would be interesting to see how many of you, you know, are on which side of the fence. Anyway, happy days. A nice long one for you. See ya.